Hello, students. High five, buddy. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, today, today we are going to be finishing up our notes on the microscope so we can have some fun with microscopes tomorrow on lab day. So let's jump right into it, shall we? Uh, yesterday, you may recall, we finished up with uh, talking about the compound microscope and mention the name Leeuwenhoek. Now, why should that name Leeuwenhoek sound familiar to us this week? Who is Leeuwenhoek? That's right, the scientist of the week this week. And a couple of you got a bonus point yesterday because you said Leeuwenhoek out loud for all to hear. And we're making the others wonder why. Well, those of you that earned that bonus point, you know why you got that bonus point. Good job. Anyway, we also mentioned how Leeuwenhoek is the father of microbiology and how microbiology is, uh, is made up of a number of little words. Micro, which means small. Bio, which means life. And L-O-G-Y, which is the study of something. So microbiology literally means the study of little or small living things. And so that's why we call Leeuwenhoek the father of microbiology. Now let's enter the world of microbiology at this time by uh, talking about some of the uh, techniques that we use to use the microscope. There are four basic components to the use of a microscope when focusing an image. We're going to be adding to this in a little bit, but for now, in your book, I'd like you to write down the following four uh, steps. First, raise the body tube using the coarse adjustment knob. Raise the body tube using the coarse adjustment knob. Now, as we go over this list, it may not make a lot of sense to you yet, but once I show you, we go into the lab here in a moment and check out the microscope and refer to the different parts of the microscope, and I show you how it's used, it's going to make a lot more sense to you. Second step on this list is place the specimen on the stage. Now, that doesn't mean they're going to perform for you on stage all oh. Though maybe it does. Maybe we will be putting them on a stage for, you, for them to perform for you. A specimen is simply the object that you're going to be looking at. Sometimes it will be a non-living thing. Sometimes it will be a living thing. Sometimes it will be a moving thing. Uh, so throughout this year, the specimen uh, may or may not be moving by itself, but we are going to learn how to move it ourselves on the stage, which is a flat platform on which the specimens are going to be performing for us, basically. Third step, lower the body tube. The body tube we will lower, but only when the objective lens is on the low power magnification. And I'll show you why that is so important to make sure it's on low power magnification. And then finally, you're going to focus up using the coarse adjustment and then the fine adjustment knobs until you get it into focus for your eyeball, which makes me think of something else. Some of you might wear glasses when using a microscope, you don't need to wear glasses at all because you are going to be focusing the image for your individual eyesight. Nobody else's but yours. And no matter what your eyesight is, you'll be able to focus it for you. So that's a good thing. 
Now, before we get into the nitty gritty details about how to use the uh, the course, or rather the, the compound microscope, there, there is one other microscope I want to introduce you to here real quick, and that is the stereo microscope. Now, that doesn't mean it has speakers hooked up to it. It's not that kind of stereo. But with a stereo sound system, there are two speakers so that you can hear it through both ears. And with a stereo microscope, there are two eyepiece lenses. I love stereo microscopes because it, they enable you to see things in 3D. Have you ever been to a 3D movie, maybe even one with like special effects and stuff other than 3D? Uh, they're really cool, but 3D means three-dimensional, which means it like woo, pops out at you on the screen. Imagine if this screen were three-dimensional. You'd be moving away from me right now because I'd be popping you in the face. 3D, three dimensions. It's got depth to it. A compound microscope with two eyepiece lenses enables you to use binocular vision using two eyes and make things makes things appear 3D because you're looking at an object, specimen, whatever it is, from slightly two different angles. The shadows on the specimen give you a graphic relief, make it pop out at you, which is really super cool. When I was a kid, we used to have things called uh, view masters. And a view master looked like kind of funky square binoculars that you put a disc in it and you rotate it. And every time you look through it, there was one picture for your right eye, one picture for your left eye. And because you were using both eyes, it made it pop out almost magically 3D. I don't know if any of you have ever heard of a view master before, but they are pretty cool. They are definitely pretty cool. All right, so we've talked all the basics about microscopes. Now it's time to start learning the identity of the different parts of a microscope so that we can start using them. All right, so there is a picture in your book of a microscope and like this. And that picture in your book, you are going to be labeling all of the squares. And we're going to label those squares one at a time. We'll do it together. And then I'm going to quiz you. You need to make sure you learn the identity of all of these different parts of a standard regular compound light microscope. So let's begin with our list in the upper left hand corner. That arrow is pointing to the course adjustment knob. Now, if you look at the course adjustment knob on this diagram, it is the larger of the two adjustment knobs because the next one is the fine adjustment knob. Now, in the laboratory, we have microscopes with both a course and a fine adjustment knob, but we also have microscopes with only one knob that functions both as a coarse and fine adjustment knob. But in this diagram and the primary microscopes we will be using, the coarse adjustment knob moves the body tube, the part that it's connected to, a greater distance than the fine adjustment knob. You'll be using coarse adjustment knobs first, and then you'll use the fine adjustment knob to fine tune the focus for uh, your eyeballs. The next part of our diagram is called the arm. It is the structure of the microscope that basically holds the bottom to the top together. And it is a very important part of the microscope as we will discover when we're learning how to carry and use the microscopes. Working our way down the list, we have the diaphragm. The diaphragm, that arrow, is pointing to an opening or a hole in what we call the stage. And the diaphragm is where light is allowed to enter through the stage and illuminate 
our specimen, whatever it may be. It's kind of like the spotlight on a real stage. The diaphragm allows light through the stage and onto our specimen. Now to the right-hand side of our diagram here. From the very top, we have the eyepiece lens. The eyepiece lens is the one that will be closest to your eye. That's why we call it an eyepiece lens. It's through the eyepiece lens that you will be looking into your microscope and exploring the wonderful world of microbiology. And we view through the eyepiece lens right through the body tube. The body tube is just simply a hollow tube uh, which connects the eyepiece lens to the objective lens a little bit lower down. And those objective lenses are connected to a structure called the nose piece. The nose piece on a microscope rotates. It clicks into position as you change from one objective lens to another objective lens. Now, the microscope here that we are checking out and the ones that we'll be using in our lab, typically there are three objective lenses, a low, medium, and high power objective lens. We'll learn how to tell the difference between the three, and we'll learn about the magnification powers of the three as well. The next structure I made reference to earlier, this is the flat platform on which we place specimens, and it is called the stage. This is where all of the performing will take place. And beneath the stage, directly underneath the diaphragm, that opening, we have a light source. Now, on many of our microscopes, we have an actual lamp that you will turn on and turn off and adjust the brightness of. But some of our microscopes will actually have a mirror. You don't need a, a lamp. You just need it to be light in the room. So be aware that the light source is either a lamp or a mirror. And that brings us down to the very bottom of our microscope, which is called the base. The base is on the bottom of the microscope, and that's what holds it upright. If it weren't for the base, well, the microscope would topple over. So here we have all of the structures of a typical microscope. And uh, what we're going to do now is what I'd like us to do is we're going to do a little quiz. We're going to do a little quiz here. I'm going to take you over to a close-up view of the microscope. And we're going to check out the different parts in our little lab. And I'm going to point to one of the structures on our laboratory microscope. And what I'd like you to do is to call out the answer nice and loud. What I am I pointing to? So I'm going to point to a part on the microscope. I want you to yell out what you think the answer is. And we'll see if you're right or not. Don't worry. This, this quiz is just a, a verbal quiz. It won't count toward your grade until later this week, and then it will. So let's do a little fun quiz here. So everybody, all to, oh, by the way, you can look at your diagram in your book while you're uh, checking out this microscope and see if you can find the similarities. So let's begin with this. Everybody, what is this called? Very good. This is the eyepiece lens, the eyepiece lens. This is the lens that you're going to be looking through with your eyeball. And most microscopes have an eyepiece lens, which have a magnification power of 10 times. Now, that might not mean much to you right now, but it's going to be important for you to remember. In fact, our microscopes in the lab, they're even labeled 10x, which means 10 times. So if you were to use just the eyepiece lens by itself and look through it, 
what you are looking at would appear 10 times bigger. So that, that's pretty powerful in and of itself. But we're not done yet. So let's check it out. Next part of our microscope, this part right here. What is this called, everybody? Nice. It is our arm. The arm connects the top with the bottom. In fact, let's go there now. What is the bottom of the microscope called? Base. Fantastic. So we've got the eyepiece lens, the arm, and the base. All right, let's look at some other parts. How about this tube right here? What is that called? The body tube, very good. And at the bottom of the body tube is this structure which rotates and that's called the, you hit it on the nose, the nose piece. Very good. And at the bottom of the nose piece, we have three of these little structures. What is each one of those called? Objective lenses. Now notice, notice the objective lenses. We've got a short and squatty objective lens. And if we rotate, we've got a slightly longer objective lens. And we rotate even more, we've got a really long objective lens. The really small one is called the low power. The next one is the medium power. And what do you think this one is called? high power magnification. Now, each of them have a number on them as well. And if you look at the number and you multiply it by the eyepiece lens, so it's objective lens multiplied by the eyepiece lens, you get the total magnification of what you are looking at. So let me give you for instance. The low power objective lens has a magnification power of four. So if you're looking through both the eyepiece and the low power objective lens, you're going to multiply 10 times four. So what is 10 times four equal to? 40. 40. So when using the low power objective lens, whatever you're looking at is 40 times larger than in real life. Now, think about this for a moment. 40 times larger. Let's say you were five feet tall. Five feet tall. Anybody five feet tall? Raise your hand if you're about five feet tall. Take five feet and multiply it by 40. And what do you have? 40 times five is what? Let's see. Five times four is 20. Add a zero and that's 200. If we could fit you on the stage of this microscope and look at you under low power, it would be like blowing you up to 200 feet tall. Think about that. That's a, that's a, that's pretty tall. That's bigger than King Kong. 200 feet tall you would be at 40 times magnification power. Wow. <laughs> but that's the low power. Let's move over to the medium power. The medium power objective lens is 10 times. So if you were to multiply 10 times 10, what's 10 times 10? It's 100. So to put this into perspective, let's go back to you being five feet tall times 100. What's five times 100? 500 feet tall. That is taller than the Statue of Liberty. Think about that for a moment. If we could put your body on this stage and magnified you 
that many times, you'd be taller than the Statue of Liberty. This is the scale at which we are making things larger. Think of that in reverse. Think about how much we're magnifying itty bitty tiny little things that you can't see with the unaided eye. We need a microscope in order to magnify these things to see the invisible world of animacules, as Van Leeuwenhoek said. So let's go to our last one here. Our high power objective lens has a magnification power of 40. What is 40 times 10? 40 times 10. That's 400. Oh my, 400. So let's use your five foot tall body again as an example. Oh boy. If you're five feet tall and you multiply it by 400, any idea what that would be? Yell it out if you have the answer. 400 times five. That's 2,000 feet tall. The largest building in New York City is World Trade, or Trade World, is the, uh, oh gosh, what is the uh, the name of the uh, the tallest building in New York City? Freedom Tower. Freedom Tower. Uh, World Trade One. It, that building is 1,776 feet tall. You would be almost 300 feet taller than Freedom Tower. That makes your jaw drop when you think about it. Four, or rather, 2,000 times magnification. That is, I'm sorry, 400 times magnification would make you 2,000 feet tall. A lot of numbers here, right? Uh, remember, eyepiece, always 10. Objective lens, it changes. And you are the one who change it, and you've got to click it into position. So we'll get back to this. So these are the objective lenses. All right, let me keep quizzing you here. I got a little sidetracked with all that little trivia info. The large adjustment knob here, call it out loud and proud if you know what it is. It's the course adjustment knob. Now watch what happens. When you turn the course adjustment knob, the whole body tube goes up and down. Now, what is the small knob called? Good, it's the fine adjustment knob. And when you move the fine adjustment knob, guess what happens? You can't really see it, but the same thing is happening. You're also making the body tube go up and down, just not that much. You're doing it a lot more with the coarse adjustment knob. So we'll go over this again in the near future, but whenever you begin using a microscope, you always want to adjust the coarse adjustment knob so the body tube is all the way up, and you always begin on the low objective power facing straight down, and then you lower the body tube down. Think about why that might be so important when you think about the length of the high power objective lens. Bad things could happen if you're starting it on the high power objective lens and you lower the body tube all the way down. I'm not going to do it because you might crack and break the high power objective lens. And believe it or not, this little part here is the most expensive part of an entire microscope. So be careful. Always begin using the low objective power. All right, we're not finished with all the parts here yet. So let me ask you this. What is this flat part on the microscope called? where the specimens perform for you. It's called a, very good, stage. 
And in the middle of the stage, there is an opening. What is that opening called? It's called diaphragm. Diaphragm. The pH sounds like an F. And directly below the diaphragm, underneath the stage, we have here a, oops, I almost told you. What is it, everybody? A light. Yeah, this is a light source. With this particular microscope, it is a, a lamp, not a mirror. But this lamp can turn on, and it can be adjusted, and it can turn off. I don't know if you can see that. We'll, we'll definitely see it but uh, later on, but that is the lamp. I think we mentioned everything else. Correct me if I'm wrong. The only thing that this microscope has that our diagram didn't are these funky things here, these little clips. And these little clips are called stage clips. In fact, if you want to add that to your diagram, go for it. These are stage clips. And stage clips help us to attach our slide, our specimen, to the stage so that it doesn't slide around. So here we have all of the basic parts of our typical compound microscope. Okay, so let's head on back to our notes. Oopsie daisy. Okay, so here we have left our diagram our diagram you should have completely labeled, and I'm going to give you a big hint for this week's quiz. Study the diagram. You need to know all of the different parts of the microscope. Okay, now, before we move any further, tomorrow we are going to go over the techniques for actually using the microscope, and we'll kind of do an activity together in class virtually, beginning with some very important key points to remember. But for now, we're going to end it here for now, and I'd like you to go back to our one-stop shopping location for science information, Google Classroom, and continue with the next item, on the list. So thanks for joining us here today and tomorrow, even though you're at your seats, you're still going to have some fun tomorrow. We're going to do some real activities together. So ladies and gentlemen, for today, bye-bye.